The men moved as if they were not in a hurry. They meandered towards where we were in a leisurely way. When they got closer, I noticed they were four young Indians. They seemed to recognize Don Juan. He talked to them in Spanish. They were very soft-spoken and treated him with great deference. Once I engaged them in conversation, they were very friendly and communicative. They told me they were there in search of power quartz crystals and had been wandering around the lava mountains for several days without luck. Don Juan looked around and pointed to a rocky area about 200 yards away. That's a good place to camp for a while. The area he had selected was very rugged. We sat down on the rocks. Don Juan announced he was going into the chaparral to gather dry branches for a fire. I wanted to help him, but he whispered to me that this was a special fire for those brave young men and he didn't need my help. The young men sat down around me in a close cluster. One of them sat with his back against mine. I felt a bit embarrassed. When Don Juan returned with a pile of sticks, he commended them for their carefulness. He said the young men were a sorcerer's apprentices and it was a rule to make a circle and have two people back to back in the center when going on hunting parties for power objects. Don Juan selected a place close to a big boulder and started to make a fire. None of the young men moved to help him but watched him attentively. When all the sticks were burning, Don Juan sat with his back against the boulder with the fire to his right. I watched the young men. They sat facing Don Juan, making a perfect half circle. I noticed that Don Juan was directly facing me and two of the young men had sat to my left and the other two to my right. Don Juan began telling them that I was in the lava mountains to learn not doing and that an ally had been following us. He explained to the young men that quartz crystals could be found in certain specific spots in that area and that once they were found, they had to be coaxed to leave their abode by means of special techniques. The crystals then became the man himself and their power went beyond our understanding. Next, he talked about searching for the spirit that would turn an ordinary crystal into power and said that the first thing one had to do was find a power spot to lure out the spirit. That place had to be on a hilltop and was found by sweeping the hand with the palm turned towards the earth until a certain heat was detected with the palm of the hand. A fire had to be made on that spot. Don Juan explained that the ally was attracted by the flames and manifested itself through a series of consistent noises. The person searching for the ally had to follow the direction of the noises until the ally revealed itself and then wrestle it to the ground in order to overpower it. It was at that point that one could make the ally touch the crystals to imbue them with power. He warned us that there were other forces at large in those lava mountains, forces which did not resemble the allies. They didn't make any noise, but appeared only as fleeting shadows and didn't have any power at all. Don Juan added that a bright feather or a highly polished crystal would attract the attention of an ally, but in the long run, any object whatsoever would be equally effective because the important part was not to find the objects, but to find the force that would imbue them with power. What's the use of having beautifully polished crystals if you never find a giver of power? On the other hand, if you don't have the crystals, but you do find a proper spirit, you could put anything in its way to be touched. You could put your dicks in the way if you can't find anything else. The young men giggled. The most daring of them, the one who talked to me first, laughed loudly. <laughs>